today I want to show you how a lazy mathematician can sometimes be a good mathematician. When I was in primary school, I had trouble remembering that 7 times 8 was 56. It would be a lot easier if there was a lot less numbers. So what I'm going to do today is replace every number with one of just 7 numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So how will I do that? Well, by taking the remainder when I divide any number by 7. So let's see how this works. What about the number 12? Well, 12 equals 1 times 7 plus 5. So the remainder of 12 when I divide by 7 is 5. So I'll just write 12 equals 5. Whenever I see 12, I can replace it with 5. Let's do some more. What about 25? Well, 25 equals 3 times 7 plus 4. The remainder of 25 when I divide by 7 is 4. So 25 equals 4. I can replace 25 with 4. Next, 75. Well, the remainder of 75 when I divide by 7 is 5. So I'll replace 75 by 5 wherever I see 75. Now at this point you might say, hold on, 12 is the same as 75. They both equal 5. This is weird. Well, it is weird and it's lazy, but it's going to help us solve some problems, as we'll see soon. Here's a few more. 9 is the same as 2, and 20 is the same as 6. Now, the great news is that most of the rules of arithmetic work when we're lazy. So let's have a look at addition first. What is, or what does 100 become? Well, the remainder, what I'm saying is, what is the remainder of 100 when we divide by 7? Now, I could divide 100 by 7 to work out the remainder. I think 100 is something like 14 times 7, and then I'd have to work out what the remainder, but ah, let's be lazy. 100 equals 25 plus 75. We know from before that that equals 4 plus 5. And we know that that equals 9, which equals 2. So the remainder when 100 is divided by 7 is 2. We can also multiply. So what does uh, 25 by 75 become? So what's the remainder when 25 times 75 is divided by 7? So let's be lazy. 25 by 75. Well, we know that 25 is 4, the 75 is 5, so that gets us to 4 times 5, which equals 20, which equals 6. So the remainder when 25 times 75 is divided by 7 is 6. Notice that I don't even know what 25 times 75 is to work this out. So let's do one more. What does 75 squared become? What I'm asking there is, what is the remainder when 75 times 75 is divided by 7? Well, let's be lazy. 75 squared equals 5 squared equals 25 equals 4. So the remainder when 75 squared is divided by 7 is 4. So now let's use these ideas to prove something we're certainly going to be lazy in doing it. Before I start, I just want to say something to high school students listening. Um, just because I say to be lazy here doesn't mean that I'm saying you should be lazy with all your mathematics. I certainly don't want to be telling your parents that oh, there's this guy in the video who says that I should be lazy, so therefore I don't need to do my homework. Okay, now let's move on and look at what we're going to prove today by being lazy. If 7 divides a squared plus b squared, then 7 divides both a and b. And being lazy will enable us to prove this very easily. So we take any numbers, consider, you can pick any numbers a and b you want. And what we're saying then, if 7 divides a squared plus b squared, then 7 must divide both a and b. So let's have a look at an example. 
7 divides 245, and 245 is 7 squared plus 14 squared. And so we can conclude, if our theory is right, that 7 divides both 7 and 14. Now at this point you might say, well, that seems sort of very obvious. This works probably for, for all numbers, not just 7. But that's not true. 8 divides 10 squared plus 2 squared. But 8 does not divide 10 nor 2. So you might say, oh yeah, but 7's a prime number. Okay, well 2's a prime number too. So 2 divides 5 squared plus 3 squared. But 2 does not divide 5 nor 3. So then you say, oh yeah, but 7's an odd prime. Okay. 5 divides 3 squared plus 4 squared. But 5 does not divide 3 nor 4. So 7 seems to be a little bit special. So let's now prove the statement. And so to do that, I'm going to start with a first line is going to say if 7 divides a squared plus b squared. Then there'll be some statements that logically follow one from the other. And at the end, I want to have 7 must divide both a and b. So it's going to look a little bit like this. So let's start. So our first line is if 7 divides a squared plus b squared. Well if that's the case, then using our lazy mathematics, then we can conclude that a squared plus b squared equals 0. I can replace a squared and b squared with 0. So now let's have a think about a squared and b squared equaling 0. I just want to focus on the a to start with. Now. Of course, I can replace any a with its remainder when I divide by 7. So a can really only equal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So now I can write out underneath what a squared can equal. Well, 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9, but 9 equals 2. So I've written 2 there. 4 by 4 is 16, which equals 2. 5 by 5 is 25, which equals 4 and 6 times 6 is 36, which has a remainder of 1 when we divide by 7. So here you can see that um, a squared can really only equal 0, 1, 2, or 4. And of course I can have the same argument for b squared. So here I've got all the values for a squared and b squared that are possible. So what happens now when a squared plus b squared equals 0? Because that's what we got up to in the proof. Well, let's try and work out how a squared plus b squared can equal zero. Actually, when I do this in front of a live audience, um, people seem to have trouble working out when a squared plus b squared equals zero. So, you might like to have a think about that as we go through. Let's try one though. What happens if a squared equals one, b squared equals two? Well, one plus two equals three, so that doesn't work. We don't get a zero. What about 4 plus 4 equals 8, and 8 equals 1, but that doesn't equal 0, so that's no good. We could try a squared equals 0, b squared equals 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, that's no good. Uh, 2 plus 2 equals 4, that's no good. So what is, is there a way that a squared plus b squared can equal 0? Well there is a way, in fact there's only one way, and the only way that a squared plus b squared can equal 0 is if a squared equals 0 and b squared equals 0. So we can now write that in the proof because we got up to a squared plus b squared equals 0. What we've just seen is that if a squared plus b squared equals 0 then the conclusion we can draw is that a squared must equal 0 and b squared must equal 0. So now what's the next line of the proof? Well, what can we infer from knowing that a squared equals 0? Let's put up the table of a and a squared again. You can see there's only one way that a squared can equal 0, and that's if a equals 0. And we can do the same for b. So if we know that a squared equals 0 and b squared equals 0, the next line of proof we could put in is that hence a equals 0 and b equals 0. Well, what does it mean if a equals 0 and b equals 0? We're nearly finished. <laughs> well, it means that the remainder of a, when we divide by 7, equals 0. 
and this means that 7 must divide A. And of course, we can have the same result for B. So we end with the final line, therefore 7 must divide both A and B. So we've proved what we want to prove. If, a, if 7 divides A squared plus B squared, then 7 divides both A and B. I hope you've enjoyed seeing that lazy mathematics can be good mathematics.